Ivy has some nerve, hoping that Grace and Sam's marriage isn't valid so she can make another play for Sam. Hank, in all fairness, I don't think Ivy came here knowing what she would witness. She brought flowers to decorate the altar. Oh, Pilar's right. I mean, Ivy couldn't have known that I was going to try and jog Grace's memory by reenacting what might have been her wedding to David. Uh, excuse me, but that wasn't a what might have been my wedding to Grace. That was a reenactment of my wedding to Grace. We're married. And it's high time you people accepted the fact that Grace is my wife. What is Ivy doing here? I have no idea. I overheard what went on inside and I'm, I'm really sorry that it just made a bad situation <sighs> worse. Somehow, I doubt that. <laughs> Believe me, Grace. I know better than anyone else what a strong marriage you and Sam have. And I'm sure that you can survive this unexpected threat to your happiness. Well, you got that right. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like some time alone with my wife. Of course. Grace, don't worry about Ivy. She's not our problem anymore. It's Hastings. Now, you shouldn't believe a word he says. What about the word of a priest, Sam? Father Mike remembers marrying David and me over 20 years ago. And by reenacting the ceremony, like Eve suggested, I actually had memories of our wedding. Grace, you saw a flash of a man's arm, Sam, not David's face. I had face. memories of a wedding other than ours. Look, I know Isn't that Eve enough? meant well. Listen, just what stop! You... The facts are there, Sam. You have to accept them. I am... I'm married to David Hastings. I'm David's wife. That's right, Grace. And soon Sam will be my husband. The spell that begins with the wall of scepter worked! Oh, its power is incredible to me. Maybe my spell did work. Maybe? Can Tammy feel the wind? Timmy and Tammy will be all bumping away before Norma comes back to face them. <sighs> I'm getting nervous, Father. I want to get back to Timmy and Tabitha. Don't rush off, Buttercup. You don't want the kids to wonder where you're going. Yes, Father. We could slowly slink away. Then when I'm back at the pit, Timmy and Tabitha will die a slow and painful. I knew Charity was just here. And finding this piece of her shirt proves it. But how did her shirt get stuck in the rock? I don't know. It looks like it's embedded in there, but that's impossible. Look, what matters is that Charity was just here. And we have to find her. Charity! 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 This is all your fault. It's not. Charity just wandered off. But you and Reese were supposedly watching her. Well, what can I say? My cousin's a freak and a sneak. No, Kay. You're the sneak. I know you purposely distracted Reese while Charity wandered off. Uh-uh. Uh-huh. Because you think that story that Reese got off of the internet is still gonna come true. That Charity's gonna die and you're gonna end up with Miguel. Luck. Simone, I haven't done anything wrong you're here. right! And, and I am sick and tired of you saying that it's my fault. I just hope that you can live with yourself if your own cousin dies. Charity! Will you help us? Yes, I'll do whatever you want. Free! <laughs> Free! 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 Julian, answer me. Why are you defending Teresa? Is there something going on between you two? I married Teresa. Mr. Crane. Yep. And I was your witness. You see? The judge gave me the marriage license for safekeeping since you two were so blotto. There it is, in black and white. Mr. and Mrs. Julian Crane. Uh, Julian, I'm your fiance. Answer me. 
Did something happen between you and Teresa that I should know about? Oh, this is a fine mess you've gotten yourself in, Julian. Let's see you get out of it. Do you see Charity over there? No, I don't. Well, she's got to be around here somewhere. Will you keep looking for her? Oh, of course I'll keep looking. Thanks. No way to give you brats the slip. Oh, I was so close to leaving, Father. Patience, Buttercup. Timmy and Tabitha will still be in the pit when you finally get away. You can cook them both then. Oh. Uh. Enormous New England clam bake. Come take a look at this, Miguel. Really look at it. Now you see how the fabric is embedded in the groove of the rock? Yeah. It's like Charity was walking through the rocks when, bam, it closed behind her and caught a piece of her shirt. Exactly, that's what I said. Come on, I mean, how is that possible? Well, I don't know, but when it comes to Charity, stranger things have happened. What do you want from me? We want you to use your powers to help us. To free us. Without you, we are all doomed. Well, what's going on with you and the little fajita? Nothing, sweet cheeks. Now just give the envelope back to Teresa. Why? What's in it that you don't want me to see? Ethan, before I can confess it to him, I'm dead. Teresa, join me. If Rebecca sees that picture, she's gonna know that Julian and I are married. And then she and Gwen will kill me. We just have to hope Mr. Crane keeps Rebecca from looking inside that envelope. Well, if Julian doesn't, there'll be more fireworks in here than in Boston Harbor on the 4th of July. <laughs> well, why don't you want me to see a simple photograph? What harm could it possibly cause? Are you sure he's dead? He's gone! Oh my god, I can't believe it! She's dead! Stop saying that Grace is your wife. I've seen her with my brother for over 20 years. Look. Look at these pictures. Grace and Sam have a family together. Don't you see how much they're in love? Grace and I were in love too. Then she developed amnesia. I'm sorry about that. But I still think you should leave Harmony like you said you would. Let Grace be with Sam and their children. Hank is right. When a couple has a child together, they have a bond that lasts forever. Couldn't you just please respect that and leave before you cause more heartache? I came back to get the woman I love. 
That woman doesn't exist anymore, David. Grace doesn't have any memory of ever being that woman. All she remembers is being Sam's wife. He is the only man that she remembers loving. But what about Sam? Grace isn't the only woman he's ever loved. You told me earlier that he loved Ivy, that they had a son together. Yes, they do. Then the relationship ended and Sam met Grace. The relationship ended. Why? Who broke it off, Sam or Ivy? Well? Ivy was tricked by her father into thinking that Sam didn't love her anymore. Governor Winthrop wanted Ivy to marry Julian Crane so that his father Alistair could help him keep the shipping business afloat. So they were torn apart by circumstance. Just like Grace and Iowa. I guess you could say that. So Sam and Ivy were never able to have closure with one another. What's your point? That maybe deep down inside, their love is still alive. Like Grace's love for me. Oh, the sooner that Sam can accept that Grace is married to David, the sooner he'll be free and we can start the life we should have started years ago. I refuse to believe that you're Hastings' wife. Now my instincts as a cop tell me he's nothing but a liar. Oh, she'd never come to Harmony. He'd been killed in one of those faraway photography shoots. My God. Sam, don't say such things that you wish that somebody was dead. I mean, this is not David's fault. He came to Harmony looking for the woman he married 20 years ago. He hasn't lied to us. Everything he said has proven to be true. Grace, why are you defending him? I am not it's... defending David. I'm defending the evidence. Look, I won't accept it. Hastings is a liar. Grace, I can feel it. I'm sorry, Sam. I don't think he's a liar. I think he's... He's admirable. He's trying to save our marriage. God damn it. Great. You and David don't have a marriage. Grace, you're my wife. And I won't let anyone take you away from me. What is in this envelope, Julian? Would you just give it to Teresa? What is going on here? Why are you siding with the maid's daughter? Am I not still your fiance? Am I not still wearing your engagement ring? Yes, you're still wearing my engagement ring, but give the bloody envelope back to Teresa. Why do you care what's in it anyway? Mr. Crane is right. Why do you care what's in it? I do not like your tone, Teresa. You know, I can't believe that you are carrying on about an envelope when Ethan, Luis, and Chad are at sea in a hurricane looking for Sheridan. Get off your high horse, Teresa. If anything happens to Ethan, I'm holding you personally responsible. Me, Gwen? Yes, you claim that you love him, and yet you let him put himself in harm's way out in this stupid storm. I told you, I try to stop him, but Ethan did what he wanted to. Ladies, would you just, please, just, just calm down. It pains me to say it, but I, I, I think that you should prepare yourselves for the inevitable. <clears throat> what do you mean? It's a massive storm out there. The hurricane is huge. Some are calling it the, the perfect storm. I mean, I'm sorry to say it, but I believe that Ethan is already dead, as Chad and Luis must be. No. Ethan and Luis aren't dead. And neither is Chad, Jean. They're still alive, Whitney. I know it. Chance that Luis is still alive. We gotta find him. Yeah. Wait! Look over there! Hurry! We gotta get to him before he goes down! Luis! Oh, it's working! Oh, oh it's working! Oh, sugar and spice. Spice. My spell didn't work after all. Um, try another one, Tabby. To me, Tabby, I have to get out of here before Norma gets back. 
O oh, ancient scepter of the warlocks, hear my plea. Help this witch and this doll from Norma flee. And hurry too, because Norma gives evil a bad name. <sighs> you really think Charity passed through here somehow? It's exactly what I think. It's as if this were some sort of secret cave entrance that opened up and then closed oh. behind Charity. Ah, look, 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 look. This is solid rock. Yeah. You know, there's no opening, so... None that we can see. I agree with Reese. All right, this has got to be some kind of secret entrance. You know, how else would a piece of Charity's shirt get caught in what looks like solid rock? We've just got to find a way to pry it open. Norma. Norma? Hey, could we use your axe to pry this rock apart? Fudge! I was almost out of here. Hey. Thanks. He took my axe, Daddy. Oh, I feel so small and vulnerable without it. Don't worry, sweet bee. Miguel hitting your axe against the rock wall will sharpen it even more. When you do get to Timmy and Tabitha, you'll slice through them like butter. Butter. Charity! Charity! Before I help you, you have to help me warn Teresa, Sheridan, and Louise that they're in danger. It's too late. They're all doomed. No! See for yourself. Please, no! It's all over for your friends, Charity. They're all doomed! Ethan, Luis, and Chad are alive. Of course they are. Julian, how could you even think that anything has happened to them? I'm sorry, I'm just being realistic, that's all. Ethan is okay. And as soon as he gets back, we are gonna get married. Do you understand? Ethan, and Louise, and Chad, they are all alive. They have to be. Sam feels nothing for Ivy now. He loves Grace. So, so what about this Ivy woman? Dr. Russell seemed to get angry earlier when she saw that Ivy was here. You said she wanted to sink her talons back into Sam. I can only take that to mean that she still has feelings for the guy. Yes, she does. Ivy's made no secret of that. You seem to know Ivy best. Yes, I go back a long way. As far back as when she and Sam were together? Mm-hmm. Yes. How was their love? I will not lie to you, Mr. Hastings. Sam and Ivy's love was as sweet as it was passionate. They were very young, and they were sure that they had found their soulmates. Their love was powerful, intense, all-consuming, and to see them together so blissful, it, it took my breath away. Sounds like they had something really special. 
Yes, they did. But it's over. Sam and Grace are together. They have a family. Hank is right. But Sam and Ivy were a couple first. Just like Grace and I were. Well, like Hank said, Sam and Grace have children together. You know, you people keep harping on the fact that Sam and Grace had children together. That children alone should validate their marriage. Well, what about Sam and Ivy? They have a son together. Maybe they should be getting married and stay together, which would free up Grace to be with her first love, her one and only true husband. say you won't let anybody take me away from you, but the truth is I, I may not be yours to begin with. Grace. The evidence shows that I, I married to David. I about Sam, the evidence, Grace. A priest remembered marrying David me in front of the eyes of God. You know, David is only doing what any man who's told he lost his wife would do. He's fighting every way he can to get me back. <laughs> Why are you defending him? I am just... I'm saying that David is doing what he thinks is right. Like you would if you thought you lost your wife. Grace, why are you talking about yourself in the third person? You're my wife, and nothing Hastings says will change that. It's not just what David says. It's court documents, it's church documents, it's the word of a priest, Sam. He has a mountain of evidence behind him, and it's time you started taking it seriously. I might not legally be your wife. Music to my ears. Soon Sam will be mine. I'm, I'm, I'm only trying to be realistic when it comes to the watery grave that has no doubt claimed Ethan, Louise, and Chad. My intent is not to upset anyone. Forget the tearful trio, Julian. Mm -hmm. Rebecca will be more than upset when she sees that picture of you and Teresa saying, I do. Rebecca. Dear, it's tense enough waiting for word on the fate of Sheridan's would-be rescuers without you and Teresa fighting over some silly envelopes. I insist we give it back to her. No, not until I know why Teresa doesn't want me to see it. Oh. Oh, oh, how rude. You want rude? Why don't you look in the mirror? Hey, how dare you oh, talk to me? Oh, shut up, Gwen, before I shut you up. You know, I am so tired of you two rich bitches attacking Teresa all the time. I mean, just because you have money, you think you can treat people like third world citizens? This is Teresa's property. And you know what? Whatever's in this envelope, it's her business, not yours. And you know what? If I ever see you two give Teresa a hard time about Ethan or anything else, I will personally make you two dogs ride out this hurricane tied to a tree on the beach. Understand? Come on, Teresa. Ancient scepter lost, but now found. Carry out my spell this time around. Grant this witch the power she lacks. Free the doll and me before Norma attacks. Oh, blast it. The warranty on this thing must have run out a hundred years ago. There's no power left in it at all. It has to work. Charity could be more dangerous from the warlocks. Timmy and Debbie have to escape Norma, so Timmy can save his true love. Believe me, if the Warlocks have got Miss Goody Gumdrop, there's nothing you or anyone else can do to help her. Your true love is toast. No! Not as long as Timmy has a breath in his body. <laughs> Hot air more like it. <sighs> Timmy will show his princess. Timmy will find another way out. Charity! Miguel, you're never gonna get through that. It's solid rock. Look, I have to, Kay. We have to get to Charity. 
Teresa, Ethan, Sheridan, Louise, and Chad, they can't all be doomed. They can't be. They are. And what has happened to them cannot be undone. Well, what about Miguel and my friends and, and Tabitha? Are they all doomed? No, please, no, they can't all die! Then help us, Charity! If you help us, we can help you to save the people you care about. All right, all right, what can I do to help you? that girl spoke to us. Julian, you go right over there and put her in her place. Just let it go, Rebecca. We're all under a lot of stress. Let it go? What is going on here? First you're defending Teresa, now you're defending her friends? I, I, I'll go get you and Gwen a drink. Obviously, you could both use one. Well, you're a smooth operator, old chap. Rebecca has no idea how close she came to finding out that her fiancé is another woman's husband. <laughs> All of this could have been avoided if you'd have stopped me from marrying Teresa. What? A couple of minutes ago, you were happy to have a young wife. Now you're blaming me. Yeah, you're right. Uh, bound to be a few tense moments ahead, but the bottom line is Teresa will make a delectable bride for years to come. Rebecca? just have to accept the fact that she came in second. A distant second. Ah, oh, you're one heartless hound dog. <laughs> woof, woof. Listen, you better hope that Ethan and Luis do not come back or your dog food. <laughs> Given the fury of this storm, I doubt you'll ever see them again. Luis Ethan are gone for good. What's up with Julian? Well, he probably found some island wildflower to pluck, and you're showing up here unannounced has ruined his <clears throat> gardening plans. You're probably right. He can have all the dalliances he wants, as long as I get the money, name, and power of being Mrs. Julian Crane. I just wish I understood why he was defending Teresa. There's that Justice of the Peace, the one I saw talking to Teresa earlier. I bet he knows what's up with that photo. No. Forget about that, Mother. No, Gwen, I can't. There is something strange going on with Julian, Teresa, and maybe even Ethan. Now, I don't know what it is, but I'm gonna find out. How? Don't Justices of the Peace take some sort of, like, confidentiality agreement? Like, doctors and priests and stuff? Well, what if he has? Gwen, I have two fabulous reasons that always override any confidentiality of. Like what? Watch Mama work. I can't believe how you tore into Gwen and Rebecca. I mean, I didn't know that you had it in you. Well, neither did I, I guess, but... <laughs> I guess the nerve of those two, you know, it just finally made me snap. Well, I love the part about um, tying them to a tree in the storm. <laughs> that was good. Thank you. <laughs> um, I thought of it distracted me from worrying about Ethan and the Mason chat for a while. Just I have to admit, I'm really worried about Chad. Are you still thinking that you two could be a couple? Maybe, you know, maybe I didn't misjudge Simone. Maybe she would understand. Well, even Simone can't ignore a clue like you're coming to Bermuda with Chad. Yeah, I don't know. I just really hope Chad, Ethan, and Louise come home soon. Please, God, bring our loved ones back. 
Amen. Sam wants nothing to do with Ivy. He loves Grace. They have a rock-solid marriage. I hate having to say this, but you people leave me no choice. What none of you seem to understand is that my marriage to Grace is the only one that matters. It is a legal and sacred union recognized by both state and church. And it is the only legal union that Grace is a party to. What's your point? Since Grace and I were married in a church, in a ceremony recognized by the state, Grace's marriage to Sam is invalid and illegal. We are husband and wife, and that's it. There's nothing you can do about it. What, what happened to you leaving Harmony, to letting Grace and Sam live in peace? Grace is starting to remember her feelings for me. I have a chance to win her back. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. <sighs> No. You cannot be serious. Grace is my wife. I love her and she loves me. She just can't bring herself to admit it yet. Dream on, Hastings. No, Hank. You and your friends wake up. Because as great as Grace's love is for Sam, and I see how great it is, her love for me was greater. I can't believe how you're defending this guy. After all the pain he's caused us. Sam, can't you see that this isn't David's fault? All he's done is told us the truth. You mean he hasn't been caught in a no, lie yet? He hasn't lied, Sam. Everything he said has proven to be true. David, he just wants to rekindle a love we had. A love that, that brought us together in marriage. A love that lasted over 20 years, even though he didn't know what had happened to me. A love that brought him back from overseas because, because he saw my picture in a magazine. Grace, the way you were talking just now, it's as, it's as if you, you have feelings for, for David? You're right, Sam. It did sound like that. Grace, you were so passionate about David just now. I mean, it's like, it's like you're starting to remember that you once had feelings for this guy. Grace, honey, you're not saying anything, am I right? Are you starting to remember that you once had feelings for David Hastings? <sighs> to me, half the rest. <sighs> the warlocks have charity. She's gonna have to hold them off for a while. Where's that light coming from? Jimmy thinks the warranty on the scepter is still good. <laughs> Why is that, Inspector Gadget? <laughs> Look! Uh oh. I get I'm out of here. Oh, Timmy and Tampa, they're dying for me to get back. <laughs> look, we've got to find a way to split this rock open. Reese, look, uh, find a, a, a log or something to wedge in here. One wedge coming up. Look at Miguel trying to get to charity. He won't let anything stop him. That's what real love is, Kay. Not you plotting and scheming to try to get him into bed. Simone, my wanting to sleep with him is only a part of it. I really do love him. But he doesn't love you, Kay. He loves Charity. Charity's gonna be gone soon. 
so Miguel won't have her to love. But I'll be here. Miguel and I are supposed to be together. I just know it. Do you promise that my friends and I will be safe if I help you? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, we, yes, we promise. We promise. All right. What do I have to do? We need your powers to help us destroy the horrible witch who trapped us on this island centuries ago. A witch? What witch? Everyone's attention, please. We've just received word that the rescue boat went down. Oh, God. I'm sorry, but none of the men survived. Ethan and Louise and Chad. We can't be gone. We need the camp. 